Hello, this is Mark Gavor. Today we're going to look at solving a binomial distribution problem. The probability of a man hitting the target at a shooting range is 1 quarter, 25%, 0.25. We want to know if he shoots 10 times, what is the probability that he hits the target exactly 3 times? If he shoots the target 10 times, what is the probability that he hits the target at least once? And if he shoots 10 times, what is the probability that he hits the target between 4 and 6 times? It's a binomial distribution because there is a fixed number of trials, 10. There is a fixed probability of success, which is hitting the target 25%. I guess our guy's not a great shooter. And 1 minus 25%, which is 75% of missing the target. We assume each individual effort is independent. My first shot is independent from the second shot, from the third shot, etc. So it's a binomial distribution. The probability of success of hitting the target is 0.25. The probability of Q, which is 1 minus P, of not hitting the target, of not P, is equal to 1 minus 25% or 75%. And N equals the number of trials 10. So I want to look at N. I'm going to create a little table. And I start, I can have zero. And I can hit the target zero times, or I can hit the target up to ten times. So let's create the number of times we can hit the target. Let's drag this down to ten. There's my N. Now I'd like to have the PDF, probability density function, which is the exact number, the probability of hitting it zero times, one time, two times, three times exactly. This is where we would answer the question for part A. And we have the CDF, which is the cumulative distribution, which is the probability of hitting it up to, from zero up to n times. So. CDF of 2 would be the probability of hitting it from 0 up to 2 times. Let's make this bold. Let's put a little heading on it. Heading color to distinguish it. There we have it. Now there's a function in Excel called binome. B-I-N-O-M. And it's called dis dot distribution. In previous versions, it's called just without the dot distribution, but we'll use the latest version. You see it says numbers, trials, probability of success, and cumulative. Cumulative is either 0, 1. 0 for not cumulative, 1 for cumulative. So we're doing probability density function, so what's the number that we want? The first, we want that number. And then the second one, we want the probability, or the number of trials which we said was 10. That way I could change, I could either enter 10 here or I could enter this value. Let's just enter 10 because the trials are always going to be 10 in this example. What's the probability of success? 0.25 and then we're going to have 0 which indicates that we're going to use the probability density function. So if we copy this all the way down we see that we have all these probabilities. We can make the probabilities to two decimal places. We can make it bigger to three decimal places. We can assign a percentage, if we'd rather have that, with a decimal place. I'm a mathematician, statistician. I'm going to prefer the decimal places, and I'll go three decimal places. So the probability of hitting at zero is 5.6% or 0.056. The probability of hitting it three times is 25%. So this would be the answer right here to A. Now let's do this CDF function. We could answer everything in this problem with what's the probability of hitting the target at least once? Well, at least once means one or more. 
So if I do one or more, and I highlight all that, I can go down here and say, my problem of hitting the target at least once is 0.944. It's also the one minus the probability of hitting it zero times, because remember, it's complementary. So 0 0.056 minus one is, in fact, this number, 0.994. Let's also look at the cumulative distribution just so we know how to do it. The cumulative distribution equals binom so we'll do the distribution again and number of trials is again at the first part going to be 0, comma 10, comma 0.25 and this time we say comma 1. Well, at zero, the probability is going to be exactly the same, 0 0.056. And if we copy it down, we'll see that the next probability is 0.244. And if we add 0.56 and 0.188, we see we get down here, we get 0.244. If we include that for the first three probabilities, we add that up. The sum is 0 0.526, so it continues. The probability of hitting the target two times or less is 52%. The probability of hitting the target three times or less is 77.6. And if I want to hit the probability of hitting the target more than that, more than zero, it will be the complement of that. If I want to hit the probability of hitting the target more than one, it's a complement of that, or one minus one point or 0.244. As I said, most of these problems can be solved just using the PDF, the probability density function. What's the probability of hitting the target between 4 and 6? Well, between 4 and 6, does that include 4? Does that include 6? Yes, I think it does. Between 4 and 6 inclusive. So that would be those three numbers. What's the probability of hitting the target 4 plus the probability of hitting the target 5 times plus the probability of hitting the target 6 times. They're independent events, as we know, because you can't hit the target 4 times out of 10 and 5 times out of the 10 simultaneously. So exactly those numbers. So if I highlight these three numbers, I get the probability of hitting the target between 4 and 6 times to be 0.221. So this is the way you would handle a binomial problem. It's pretty easy in Excel, and so if you want to actually do it yourself, give it a try. Let's sum up our answers here. So if we have A, B, and C. The answer to A is the probability of hitting the target exactly three times exactly three times is PDF, so it would be this number, 0.25. The probability of hitting the answer at least once, there's many ways of doing it. We could say it's the probability of not hitting the target exactly zero times because it's a complement. So it'd be equal one minus hitting the target exactly zero times. So we're going to get 0.94. If we want to increase the size of that to get everything to three decimal places, so it's 0 0.944, which is the same number we got when we highlighted 1 through 10, which is 0 0.944. And then next one, what is the probability of hitting the target between 4 and 6 times? It's equal to the sum of, and what is it the sum of? 4, 5, and 6, hitting the target exactly 4 times plus the probability of hitting the target exactly five times, plus the probability of hitting the target exactly six times. There you go, 0 0.221, which is what we got before. So if we say here are our answers, and if we want, we can make that bold, and we can put a box around it, and we can assign answers there. And if you were to turn something like this in on an assignment, I could see that you did it exactly right, and I could see how you did it. Thank you very much.